Wait, you're only um, going to subject them to three minutes of this? We've been okay. dealing with it forever. There is no better feeling than, you know, beating a high school kid in, in a match and just saying, yeah, I'm just some dad that plays once a week. I'm sorry, <laughs> dude. <laughs> you're up two strokes and you hit it in the sand on 16, you're getting booed. They, people have really fallen apart on the back nine on Sunday here. Hey everyone, welcome to Reading the Green and our Golf DFS preview show. It's Tuesday, February 8th. I'm Mike with Kyle and Jordan. Uh, we got a lot. We got a lot for this show tonight. Uh, just, just remember with Reading the Green, uh, we are the only fantasy golf resource that combines great player advice with insight on which fantasy experts actually give the best recommendations. The result is that we take all the bias out of your prep. You're not swayed by one article or one podcast. We do all the hard work and make sure that you are ready to go for each PGA Tour event. If you like what you hear, please subscribe on YouTube. You can find us on any of the major podcast platforms. And of course, on Twitter at RTG Podcast DFS. Um, we begin some feedback about where people can find more content and, you know, we're still pretty new at this. It's, uh, we, we launched earlier this year, right at the beginning of the year. And so it's coming, we're working on it. Uh, but please keep, uh, keep the feedback coming. We're having a lot of fun doing this. So of course, with tonight's episode, we got the waste management open preview. Of course, we'll recap the Pebble beach AT&T pro-am. Um, but first guys, Kyle Jordan, where do you want to start? A lot, lot to cover tonight. I think we have to start with your boy, your, your boy, Tom Hoagie, got the W. There's probably no better time than this week, right? Perfect timing. I, Jordan mentioned this before, but we've had to listen to Tom Hoagie talk, at least in text chains and stuff, for about two years. Uh, now we've only had about six podcast episodes so far, but people need to know, Mike, all right, the Tom Hoagie backstory. We'll we'll give it we'll give it three minutes of love, and then we can put it behind us because now he's now he's a PGA Tour winner. Wait, you're only um, going to subject them to three minutes of this? We've been dealing okay. with it forever. Well, if he keeps winning, you're, you're going to keep hearing about it. Uh, <laughs> eighty five hundred dollars, Tom Hoagie. <laughs> well, he's only down to eighty one hundred this week. Okay, that's besides the point. We'll get to that. Um, so here's the deal. I mentioned it last week. You know, Tom Hoagie is from Fargo, North Dakota, and we've crossed paths in a few tournaments, um, namely the pine to palm golf tournament in Detroit lakes, Minnesota up near Fargo. And, you know, actually on ESPN.com, Mark Schlabach was giving Fargo, just Fargo in general, a lot of crap, right. He was saying like, uh, you know, no one's from North, you know, the three guys from North Dakota have ever won PGA tour tournaments and, and Fargo has a lot of really good golfers and I've seen it firsthand. Um, and so I've been in, a handful of fields with Tom and he was always like the stud. I mean, he, he won this pine to palm, you know, kind of stroke play match play golf tournament. He won in 2009, finished runner up in 2010 and he was torching fields and amateur tournaments outside of that. And so it was really cool to see that firsthand and then sort of follow him a little bit through his career, but then finally see it happen on the biggest stage against guys like Jordan Spieth and, um, and Patrick Cantley and all that. So that's all. It's just a guy that I've seen play in, you know, in my past and, and I'm just excited for him. But wait, there's more to it. There's a lot. More. It, what about, what about your wife? How does she come into the Tom Hoagie backstory? Okay. So, so my wife is a competitive or had, was a competitive golfer as well. Uh, and she played Tom Hoagie in a match play tournament when I think she was 12 and he was nine. <laughs> <laughs> and this this tournament decided that they were going to have the girls champion and the boys champion from the previous year face off in like a, a shootout the next year and as she says she's like i was at i was no older than 12 and he was nine and i lost five and four in a nine hole match <laughs> i don't understand the thinking behind that let's <laughs> you know what i look back at uh at the that tournament which is still they still do that for the kids around the pine to palm and they're still mixing the the gals and the guys together at at those young ages just to do a little match play deal so it's fine um there's some just again some great golfers actually Tom Hoagie in that year that he won that tournament in 09 in the semifinals beat Amy Olson, who is an LPGA tour star. Now she, I think she finished, finished runner up in the U S open a couple years ago. Um, 
and so it's just cool. I mean, there's a lot of names that have come out of there. And Eric Van Royen has played in that tournament. Tom Lehman's won that tournament. Uh, and for the people that don't know, not Minnesotan, the Pine and Palm, where's it at every year? It's in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, which is about 45 minutes from Fargo. Okay. So it's a it's it's a fun little summer tournament, but it it attracts a lot of cool names and um, and good and good golfers from the Midwest. But like I said, Tom Hoagie was there uh, 12 years ago, and now he's doing something uh, something a little better. You know, and Mike, the the listeners want to know what's your best finish in it. Uh, I have finished. Uh, I've made it to the final eight. And let, this past year, I made it to the final 16. So there is no better feeling than, you know, beating a high school kid in, in a match and just saying, yeah, I'm just some dad that plays once a week. I'm sorry, <laughs> dude. <laughs> but anyways, um, one more thought on, on Tom Hoagie, just to give some context. So another, another brief story was in 2010, there was a lot of whispers around that golf tournament, the Find a Palm, that... Tom had cleaned up at a uh, USAM qualifier at Fargo Country Club. Shot like 10 under or something like that over the two days. And I, so I looked back at that tournament and I found th- these are some of the names that were in the field of the USAM that year that he played in it. Patrick Cantlay, Richard Rowenski, Wyndham Clark, Emiliano Grillo, Daniel Berger, Brooks Kepka, Michael Kim, Patrick Rogers, Austin Cook, Wesley Bryan, George Bryan, Kevin Tway, Max Homa, Harold Varner, Hank Leviota, Mark Hubbard, Mackenzie Hughes, all those guys qualified for the USAM that year. So like the guy's been around, I mean, he's been a good golfer for a long time. He's in a very strong peer group and most of those guys are on tour now. So this not a surprise. It just takes a little longer for some guys for their games to catch up. That's just a little better field than we beat at the Greenskeeper revenge yeah. event when we finished seventh. Yeah, no, I, it's uh yes, that was a pretty strong field that year. Um, so anyways, let's uh, we can move on, but finally listeners now know when I'm gushing about Tom Hoagie, just because he's a he's a guy from my past that I want to see do well. Yeah, it's and now great. you know. Mike promised us three minutes, and we got ten to fifteen. So welcome Here, to the let's, last let's three, two years of our <laughs> lives. All right. So <laughs> before we get into the Pebble Beach recap, um, I got we got one fantasy nugget to hit. Kyle, you got screwed over this weekend by the the golf fantasy golf lock rules on DraftKings. Yeah, ran of the week. DraftKings needs to figure out their lock times. It, it's getting. I don't know. Ridiculous, especially with some of the withdrawals. Round two showdown, Charlie Hoffman. Uh, yes, I know he withdrew the previous week before, but he shot a nice round on Thursday. No indication he's having any issues. Two hours before his tee time, it comes out he's withdrawn. But that's after the lock time because all the golfers lock at the same time. I understand it may be a lot of work for them to – or there may be issues with locking exactly when they're going to tee off, but do it by hour at minimum. Yeah. There's got to be something. They do it for other sports. Like this is yeah. not impossible. We so. ranted about it for a while, a handful of episodes ago, but I, yeah. I, and I will continue to. Yeah. No, I, I, until it's changed, right. We're going to, we're going to vote with our feet. No, we're not. We're still going to play DraftKings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So again, one more, one more uh, nugget before we get to, to Pebble beach. Um, Jordan, Kyle and I just finished a hop slam. And I feel like you got a you got a history with uh, what where, where is that from again? Bells, Bells. Bells. Uh, Jordan, you have a history <laughs> as as uh, we got some more on cameras from our live audience. Um, Jordan, what's your uh, what's your story with Hop Slam? Because I feel like we're all going to get wrapped into this uh, if you you know as you tell it. <laughs> well, it starts out as my story and it ends as your story. <laughs> uh, so Hop Slam in Minnesota was really hard to come by. Well, Kyle, what was this? Eight years ago, ten years ago, I said eight. So that since the both we both went eight, let's start. It's it's at least nine because we lived in Chicago for four years and now Minneapolis for five, and it was before we moved, which is why the story is absurd. So let's say nine or ten. Really hard to find Hop Slam. This was before you know the big IPA craze and everything. I found a place that would sell me a case of it, so I bought a case of Hop Slam. And I was new onto the game. I didn't fully realize that it was 10%. So like drinking a case of Hop Slam uh, takes takes a while. Uh, and <laughs> so I, I didn't finish it all before we decided to move to Chicago. So I moved it to Chicago. I think there were maybe four or five bottles left when we moved to Chicago. We moved once in Chicago. A couple of them made the move there. Uh, 
we moved back from Chicago, one bottle was still in my fridge and I still felt bad and didn't want to throw it away. So this, now it was five or six year old bottle of Hop Slam. I moved back and then at our housewarming party, uh, I, I served it to Mike. And then after he had opened it and started drinking it, I told him it was 10 years old. <laughs> which, which is what you want to do with the hoppy IPAs. Yeah, I but think- Mike, it, you, it wasn't skunky. You said it, it tasted wasn't... a little flat, maybe, but like... Yeah, I think I said it was like kind of caramely, which I think is what happens to IPAs. Like once all the hops actually die, there's just left with like this caramel. Like, I was like, I don't even know that I ever even had Hop Slam at that point. And so I was kind of like excited that there was one left. And I was like, can I have this? And was, yep. you, know, you most you most definitely can, sir. Do you recall how you feel <laughs> the next day? <laughs> it's fine. I, actually, I, might, I might have poured the second half on that. <laughs> But yeah, there's, uh, my, there's my hop slam story. It it's a delicious beer. Buying a case of it is a lot. That's a lot yeah. to drink. 24 uh 10 percent beers get gets to you. So we finished our hop slam. Now we have a junkyard brewery. We've talked about um the beer is named for eel. And there's an eel on it that says, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. And I thought that was pretty it's funny. pretty funny. It's yeah. delicious too. <laughs> Um, all right, let's jump into the, the Pebble Beach AT&T Pro-Am results. Um, I think that there, obviously Tom Hoagie was the winner, and, and we don't need to talk anymore about him, but a couple of other things from around the event. First of all, we tweeted out the whole Jake Owen, Phil Mickelson story. So like, if you missed that from two years ago, you can go out to our Twitter, or you can just Google it. Barstool has a whole interview with Jake Owen, and he explains how you know Phil basically, I think Phil kind of just shut him up as he was trying to talk trash to him as pretty epic um so dude, dude can golf though like the reason i even looked into that is because i he drove a green and made a birdie putt and yeah, yeah i mean he's like, played he's got an exemption on a you know corn ferry or web.com event so that being said i'm glad we don't have to watch amateurs this week i know it is kind of nice uh to be done with that um the listener league was uh pretty successful on my part because i won so Jordan and I were talking about this on Sunday. We think we need to take a different approach. We've been kind of putting the pivot lineups mm-hmm. in there. You know, we we give out our picks. We don't want the listeners to have the exact same lineup as us. So we've been pivoting a little bit and maybe has led to less than ideal efforts. Well, but we yeah. did get a listener that did take a couple of bucks finishing runner up. Spicy one uh, finished in second place. So good job there. Um, yeah, and now we. Kyle, now we know how competitive Mike is. He puts his good lineup in against the listeners. Hey, it's it's, it's uh yeah, it's fair game. There's there's uh there's, there's decent money in that one. So um, I think pretty pretty good uh pretty good week overall for the RTG model. Um, obviously, it's always going to sway a little bit um, on on how our individual lineups do. I had a very good weekend. I said I cashed every lineup except my Saturday showdown which included all 20 in a, in a 20 max tournament. So that's not going to happen that often. That was anchored by Tom Hoagie. That was uh, that was pretty cool. Mike was nice enough not to mention there on that Saturday showdown. Uh, he was a little busy at the moment, so he might have just tailed my lineup and <laughs> I led him astray. So I had the Charlie Hoffman lock debacle on Friday. And then, uh, of course, yep. showdown lineup on Saturday. Uh, but overall, yeah, as you said, great, great week for the sheet. Uh, I thought this was a cool stat. Uh, the top seven in the tournament all had multiple mentions uh, by contributors and all had a top uh, uh, MPI of over 60. So I would say that's a, about as good as performance we've seen from the sheet. Uh, overall, personally, I my GPP, my 20 max, uh, did win some money, didn't quite place a top 10 like you did. So it mm-hmm. wasn't quite as much. Uh, one tiers did miss one cash lineup that – just unfortunately had a couple of my missed cuts all together, but overall a positive week because so I'll take it. Jordan, you do okay? How was your, uh, how was your neighborhood league? Uh, I was good. You know, I've gotten really good at getting third in my neighborhood league. Which is not, they don't pay out third, do they? Correct. Correct. <laughs> the last three weeks I've gotten third. I won it the first, so maybe the last two weeks I've gotten third, the week before I won it. Uh, we've got a couple of golf, uh, golf fans and know, you know, generally what they're doing. And then we've got five or six people that are just degenerates and like to gamble. Um, and 
their strong suit is football, not golf. So uh, sounds like perfect listeners for this podcast. Yes. 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 I've got a couple of them. One of them was in the, uh, in the listener league last, last week. Perfect. Um, but yeah, no tears was my strength Tear, I, I fall back on tears. Uh, the model really, really benefits you in the tears contest because you can, you know, make some different lineups that you can't in the cash games. Yeah, for sure. Last one I had on AT&T and just because we spent quite a bit of time on him last week with Spieth and how, Mm -hmm. you know, we, he didn't have the highest mention share, but had a strong MPI. So we, we all tailed him. I, I had him in my core and, Hey, he didn't, he didn't win the event, but he was right there at the end and, and, and ended up second in points. So yeah. I mean, that's, that's what we're trying to do with our power index ranking. So if you're listening to us week to week, that power index is going to be the clue to say, is, is the, the consensus on that player is the love on that player from contributors that are having a good season um, according to our model or contributors are having a, a weaker season. And so speech was a good example of where, um, we saw a lot of con- conflicting reports uh, from fantasy experts that were either hard fades or or a lot of support, and we went by our model, and, and it paid off. Um, he almost didn't finish that round when he just about fell off a cliff, if you guys didn't see that. So um, thank God, I guess. Yeah, uh, we'll make sure we retreat that video. That That is just pure nuts. Uh, it's – yeah, you watch it and you're like, well, that this he's fine. But like, then you put yourself in that position. And you're standing above that cliff and you're hitting a golf shot. You know where your weight is transferring forward. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean that ground could give way at any moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of other things here, just on the on the wrap up uh, from Pebble Beach and our contributors, Brandon Gadula. We tweeted this out. Brandon Gadula takes the top spot with his number fire. Um, recommendations, Hoagie, Dom, and Cantlay power among the five players that he had make the cut. Um, That's the second time in three weeks that he's taken the top spot in our model. Uh, And so I think certainly giving some attention to him and looking a little more closely as he's sort of turned things up um, this season lately. Alex Hunter and his value plays on DraftKings Nation was also pretty good. Um, Some pivots there, uh, Merritt, Taylor, Nick Taylor, Pat Perez, and and, um, Matt Neesmith. Which we had to we had to look this up because I don't know that I've ever really seen this in DraftKings, but the MDF icon. I, I did love Jordan's uh, explanation as Matt didn't finish. Thank you that for was, that. That was that was, that was, that was mine. mine. <laughs> Mike, sorry. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> he didn't. Yeah. No, it, that really hurt me too. Uh, he was in my my twenty max score, but uh, what what was the actual term? Uh, it, made it, cut. It, it made cut didn't finish, but it's because they screwed up. Right, they DraftKings originally put the cut at minus three, right? Okay. And then, so everyone, everyone that was minus four had MDF. Oh, okay. I that, see. That was the issue with you know DraftKings just put put the wrong value in, and then they probably had to go in individually, and everyone at minus. It four. does sometimes feel like the DraftKings platform is they're just kind of making it up as they go along. Sometimes, <laughs> no offense, but like. Yeah, the rewards, the missions, all that. (laughs) Anyways, um, I think we still like, going forward, we still like Pat Mayo. He's he's hanging in there. Obviously, he has two picks, Kuchar and Spieth, this week. Spieth, he was great with Spieth. He was spot on. Kuchar missed a cut by a couple of strokes, which is too bad. That was his first missed cut this year. Um, Kuchar Kuchar killed me. Yeah. I was big big on the Kuch. Should have been big on the Gooch instead. I'm not sure Taylor Gooch is in this field, was he? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Speaking of Mayo, uh, Pat Mayo did want to put this out there uh, just in case, since we you know we don't have the full website up and running yet, you can't see actually where we're aggregating our picks from. He does put out multiple picks over multiple platforms. Uh, mm-hmm. We we found his DK Nation article where he highlights two picks based on strokes gain data to be his best value uh, article. He does have a different values one he puts out there from that has 13 picks. That's a little bit different. And uh, he also has his podcast. He puts out different picks there. So, you know, we are taking those into account and, and putting those into the model as well. But that's particularly that stroke skiing one where he highlights two picks. We found he is giving great advice. Yeah. And that's a good point just in general that most of these guys have different avenues where they're putting out content. And, and so we've focused on the ones that we think create the most value. 
Um, okay, so let's uh, let's take a quick break and we'll come back and talk about the Waste Management Phoenix Open, get some more beer and, uh, and figure out what we're gonna do this weekend. All right, welcome back. We have our Waste Management Phoenix Open preview, but first, remember you can play DraftKings DFS with RTG and our listeners. Please reach out on YouTube, Twitter, or any other platform where you're listening to us. Ask to be invited to our listener league and we will send you an invite. Um, we're having listeners win money every, almost every week, except for weeks that I win, which is uh, like this past week. So that was great. Um, but you have a chance to win money out of our pockets. We so pay we, two places. We pay two places as of now. Um, but as it grows, there will be some more money to win. And so we invite you to reach out and, and join our listener league. Uh, all right. So we got the Waste Management Phoenix Open at TPC Scottsdale. One of, honestly, just one of the most exciting venues. Um, certainly not the the prestige that Pebble Beach has in terms of golf history in America, but this tournament um, is just, it's a really unique. And there was, I was getting giggity, giddy over some Instagram videos of the 16th hole at night, just all lit up with the, the stadium seating and the lounges and all that. I mean, I have no context, but Kyle. I've been. You've been. Yeah. It's unlike anything else, uh, definitely in the golf world, but I would say almost more, you know, from any other sporting event I've ever been to. We, I, I was lucky enough to go, Heck, three years ago now, you got to reset everything in the COVID or, you know, forget that one year in mm-hmm. there. And uh, it was a work-based event, but got to take a client, uh, was on the par three, 16, uh, about the front edge of the tee box up on the third level. And it, it was a grand old time. Yeah. Uh, just, it's... you know, <laughs> a lot of beers consumed, a lot of great people watching. The amount of betting that goes on in those, <laughs> like, little... I mean, they call them sweets, but they're like corrals. You yeah, kind of yeah. feel like cattle in there. But that that money that changes hands up there, every tee shot is just awesome. The cheering, the booing. It does it quiet yeah. down like while they hit, or is it just constant? There's a murmur the whole time. Yeah, yeah, like it never. It's never golf quiet. Sure. But uh, but the second somebody, the first time you get in there, you know, in the morning, you get served a drink right away and then you see somebody hit it in the sand and just the booze rain out it's just yeah. you can't well, beat it jordan we're excited yeah. for you i know you said you uh you're going to scottsdale this weekend and you're talking about you know slipping out for a couple hours to go check out the tournament yeah we're gonna be There's- in north scottsdale sneaking away from the wife and kid on saturday gonna gonna check it out um it's you know it's been i went there a long time ago for a bachelor party and what what is is it the Masters? It's an experience like no other. Is that their Traditional, slogan? Traditional, like any other. Yeah, this yeah. this is the same. It's this is on par with the Masters for re- remembering and like the memories that you get out of it because it's so absurd. It is the biggest party. I was in uh, Acapulco for spring break, and this is just as crazy as Acapulco so spring cool. break. That's so college. cool. No wonder the swag guys uh, make this an annual trip. They do. Yeah. And if you, if anyone's there, I'll be looking swag hides covers around the course uh, each day for people to find. So two questions for you, Jordan. First yeah. off, when you guys went, where'd you guys hang out? Were you on 16 or? No, we just walked around and drank. We didn't want to stand in the line to get in the general bleacher. Yeah. Uh, we had a group of 20, 20 dudes for this bachelor party. So we all just we just walked around, saw all the holes, drank as much as humanly possible, uh, and had a great time. Second question: Does your wife is she going to find out that you're going to the event by listening to this tomorrow? Um, I can probably say no. <laughs> she's listened to one of them when I guilted, and I was like, you know, Kyle's really disappointed you haven't listened to any of these yet. That is a true statement. Yeah. And I told her that, and she's like, "Okay, I'll, I'll listen to one tomorrow morning." And then she listened to one, and I think she said, "I think she said she listened to the first five minutes and the last eight. Yeah. <laughs> Skip the golf talk. Yeah. yeah, she does not. She has no interest in the golf. She likes. She yeah. uh, so the so back to the golf. Side. Yeah, back to yeah. The- waste management. I am very impressed by the field this week. I was just gonna say the same thing. Twenty six of the top fifty. Um, I was actually surprised they started going down the the salaries and just seeing all these guys there, which means 
you are going to get some really good players sub, you know, sub 8,500. Um, but you're also going to have to make some choices. Yeah. I, it, yeah. First, first glance, it's going to be a tough lineup build this week. You have a lot of love and we'll just go right into the sheet. You have a lot of love at, for the expensive guys. So Justin Thomas is leading the mention share at this point. His salary is eleven thousand dollars. It's pretty high for Justin Thomas. I mean, his form has been—he played all right at, at Tory, but outside of that, he's been a little bit up and down. So his MPI is not quite as strong. Uh, we do come in with some value after that. Russell Henley uh, has at forty-six percent mention share and a strong MPI, so that's a key play to look at your lineup possibly. Then you have John Rahm, so you're back at the eleven thousand six hundred. Scotty Scheffler, 9,100. Patrick Cantlay, 10,700. All your guys above 30% mention share. So a lot of expensive guys. Uh, great players, but a lot of expensive guys getting love this week. Yeah, I think you it, – it's interesting. So that's the thing. You're going to have to make a choice because if you're rostering two guys from that group, then you're, you're taking a lot of other flyers. And this isn't like the 54-hole cuts where you get those guys playing – those six K guys playing three rounds. Like you, you really got to be focused on making cuts here. And so, um, but you look at all those guys in the, in the 10 K plus range and you can make a case for any of them, right? Like, you know, certainly Thomas, his form has been okay, but he's just one of the elite ball strikers out there. Rob number one in the world can't lay. I think his finish in the top 10 in his last four events or the top four in his last four events or something like that. Um, Matt Siyama's won here a couple of times. Victor Hovland's won three times in his last five starts. Like, you can start anywhere. Yeah. There's a lot. So those guys are expensive for a reason. Uh, yeah. But to your point, you can get some good value. Uh, you know, some of these price points for guys that we haven't seen for a while, possibly, or have been playing in, on some of the events over in Saudi. Uh, so I'm going to start like my three plays this week. I'm going to start with answer at 7,900. Uh, only about 20% mention share at some point. At this point, we still have a couple articles to get in but a strong MPI and at that price point that allows you to reach up to some more, some of those more expensive guys. I'll follow up that with a Corey Connors, 8,300 Pat Mayo is on him this week. So that's someone want to kind of look at as well. Uh, again, a good MPI. Then you've saved a little bit of money and you can reach a little bit. So I, I think I'm going to have some John Rahm uh, when I can, it's 11,600, but 40% mention share, as we said in 77 on the MPI. Andy's John Rom. Andy's John Rom. The uh, the you know answer is interesting because I think um, it seems extremely he seems extremely undervalued at seventy nine hundred. Mm-hmm. And and listening to you know Rick Gaiman made this point on his podcast, and that's true. Like seventy nine hundred, you don't see answer at that at that point a lot. He also he he hasn't been that good this year. And so that's, a, I, I don't know if you think of that as an anomaly or um, if that's just sort of what we're going to expect, but I think it's a great, I think taking him at that price is really great. Um, I don't know if it has anything to do with his recent relationship with Mark Wahlberg um, <laughs> and his tequila brand. Uh, but, but anyways, I, uh, I think it's a nice price. He's certainly a, a great player to, to fit on this course. I, yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure where you were going there, Mike. I thought I wasn't sure if we were going to have our first, like, that's a stupid pick, Kyle. <laughs> like, no, I don't ever say that to Kyle. Like, uh, and then you're like, oh, but I like him this week. No, I, I do, I do. I don't know. I don't have him in my in my core yet. I probably will sprinkle him uh, in in my uh, my tournament entries. But from my perspective, I mean, like I said, you're gonna have to make a choice of the 10k range. I'm gonna be on Cantlay. I think he's got a pretty high floor. He obviously hasn't um, he hasn't finished in the in the top spot yet this season, but. His floor just seems so high right now, and so I think I'm going to start there, followed up by the Bermuda King, Sam Burns, and then I will, I will, I'll take Russell Henley at the top of our model as a value play this week. Um, I know he gets a lot of crap for for choking away the the Sony, but you know he's uh, he hits the ball so well, and I, I hope he can hang around. You know, finish his top twenty. That's probably a good return for at that price. Yeah, no, get me wrong. Uh, Henley is going to be in a lot of my lineups. Uh, you can't, you know, 8,200 and with the mention power and the mention share we're seeing on him, that's definitely someone we yeah. got to look at playing. All right, Jordan, let's hear it. Um, well, you want my good picks or my 
funny pick first. No, uh, I mean, Henley, Henley's going to be in almost all of my lineups, uh, especially t- we'll get to tears, but um, he's, he's playing great. He's cheap. Uh, I did, I did a little research on past winners of this tournament. Also, they're almost all well-known players. I don't know if you guys looked at that at all, but like Kepka, Simpson, Fowler, which Ricky Fowler today is different than he was three years ago. Same with Gary Woodland, two years of Matsuyama, Kepka, like the last six, seven years of winners have all been strong, would have been strong plays and cost a lot. It's yeah. different than last week where you almost always seem to have a long shot winner at Pebble. Yeah. Here we're saying, you know, look, look at the top half. The other, or maybe they're well known because they won the Waste Management Phoenix Open. <laughs> maybe. Well, I'm glad. I, I am glad uh, you brought that up, Jordan, though, because I think there is something to that at this event. And I don't know if I would build a lineup based on this, but I would definitely use it as a tiebreaker of people that can play this environment. Right. Like there's certain guys that if you know you get jeered, like I feel like Bubba can rise to the occasion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some of the guy it, where there's others that the pressure turns up a little bit, you know, you're get you're up two strokes and you hit it in the sand on 16, you're getting booed. They people have really fallen apart on the back nine on Sunday here. Yep. Yeah. So that's and I'm actually gonna go I'm gonna go the opposite route since there's so many highly mentioned expensive people. I'm going, I don't, I don't want to try and pick the winner, right? Only one of them is going to win. So I'm going, I'm saving my money and avoiding all the highest ones. Uh, but so as I mentioned Henley, uh, I'm going to have a lot of Luke List. He's got uh, very high mention power index uh, and some of our favorite commentators. Uh, and then, you know, I really, I really enjoy picking someone every week that doesn't have a photo in DraftKings. Uh, so that's my sneaky play, my sneaky advice for everyone. Find someone that you don't even know what they look like. Uh, and that's Doug Gim for me. Uh, he's just got an American flag. Uh, this is the Waste Management Open, and it's going to be a party. What's more American than a big party in uh, the desert? You know, I have had absolutely zero success picking Doug Gim. So here's what, here's what I'm going to do for you, Jordan. I'm not going to take a single share of Doug Gim. And I think it'll be great. Well, it's hilarious to say that too, because I've been burned in the past, but I am going to have a sprinkle this week. Uh, you know, he has at 6,600, he has a solid MPI. So some of our good guys are on him. I'm going to, I'm going to sprinkle. I'm with you there. There we go. No jokes, Jordan. Just, it's just the photo. No, no jokes on the name. No, 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 no name, Jalen. I'm trying to be a little more serious this week. You know, we got some listener feedback uh, that I'm a terrible golf analyst. So, you know, I thought I'd go <laughs> a different route. All right. Fair enough. Uh, all right. So let's talk about tiers then, uh, since we got some of our core plays. Cash, what about with tiers? Yeah, we want to highlight tier two this week. Uh, it, it's one that's bunching up a little bit from mention share. So we have a lot of options there. You have Hideki Matazama. Uh, you have Victor Hovland, Sam Burns. So you have people that have good form, uh, that have some past winter uh, experience here. Um, at this point, I think we got to go Hideki as our recommendation there because of that stronger MPI. He's won here twice. He's won his last time out. So he's in great form. And then, hey, our good people are on him. That's going to be my pick for Tier 2. And that's that's where we disagree right there. I'm going Hovland. That's how Hovland's Hovland's been on fire lately. He has, he has, but it's not, hasn't been here. That's the only thing. Like, and I don't know what the, I don't know what the difference is, but he's won, I think two events, well, Mexico, and then he's won um, in the Middle East and I think in Europe. And so, you know, what is that? The quadfecta? Yeah. Well, hopefully. I don't, I wasn't prepared to talk to this. So I don't have the stats in front of me, but last year it sticks out in front in my mind. That Dustin Johnson, right? He was the hottest golfer in the world. Goes over to play a couple of events in Saudi Arabia. Wins the last one there. And then when he came back, his form was not Dustin Johnson form for a little bit in time. So you think maybe that's what's going to happen here? Yeah. So I'm I'm okay. going to maybe soft pedal on the guys coming back from playing in, in Saudi Arabia last week. 
I uh, don't know what happened to Dustin Johnson long term after that. I do not understand though how. I mean, I know these guys fly very comfortably. A lot of the big names that are doing this, but how they how they play all that golf there, and then they take a flight halfway around the world and just walk out on like Tuesday, and they're just totally fine. To, you know, I can't even like travel one time zone and like you know maybe if you get, get out of the airport. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, slightly, slightly, sleep slightly different, Mike. They he flew in his <laughs> private jet. They were crunched in 15A, T Rexing yeah. their arms on a computer. He had a queen size bed that he slept the entire flight. Um, he maybe had his wife or girlfriend. I don't know if Hovland's married. It was a slightly different experience. I understand. I understand. Um, <laughs> all right. Anything else on Waste Management Phoenix Open? Obviously, we will kind of finish up the plays on our model and tweet out uh, the final results, both from a share and a power index standpoint. We get all of that out on Twitter on Wednesdays, by the end of the day on Wednesday, so you're fully prepared. Um uh, for Thursday morning, but any other final comments on the tournament this weekend? To your point there, Mike, we still have about so 15, 20% of our contributors get in. So yeah, it's subject to change. Keep an eye out on our Twitter feed. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. No, okay. Enjoy the show. It is. Yes, yeah, that for sure. Well, and even on Sunday, you know, you get, you get to watch hopefully what is a very exciting finish. And then you just flip the channel over and, uh, and get to watch Super Bowl. So yeah, let, look, how about we segue? Look for, me, segue? look for me streaking across 16 sometime Saturday morning. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm only gonna have like an hour or two there, so I gotta make my time uh, worthwhile. You still have a 10 year old hop slam, right? You're gonna bring with you to Arizona, and maybe that has some hallucinogenics in it by now, or what? <laughs> let's uh, let's transition out of the of the golf talk. We talked about Super Bowl really quick. Your uh, Anyone change their Super Bowl predictions? I think Rams still getting four and a half. Um, I think we all were kind of like wanting since wanting Cincinnati to win. I don't know if that's. I think I'll be cheering for Cincy, but yeah, if I had to bet, yeah, betting on the Rams. Okay, agreed that okay. Aaron Donald and Von Miller are going to eat Joe Burrow alive in that offensive line. So, all right, have, hopefully, that's hopefully, actually an interesting. Have you? Has anyone seen an over under on sacks for the Rams? That mm-hmm. didn't didn't uh, Burrow get sacked nine times in the? I think he's been sacked yeah, he's at least five times in every playoff game. You know, I did see an interesting prop. You could take Joe Burrow passing yards. Uh, so it was it was the was the winning score of the of the waste management open going to be over under Joe Burrow's passing yards. So, <laughs> right. Like I think, I think it's a par 71. So 284 is par. So the winner is probably somewhere between 264 and 275. So that feels, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think Joe Burrow's throwing for 275? No, I would take the under. If yeah. he does, they might win. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of, kind of how I felt. That's kind of how I felt. Um, but, you know, the one thing the Bengals have going for them is uh, Sean McVay coaching in the Super Bowl. Well, d- well, that's true. He did only, he, was he scored three points total, I think, yeah. in his Super Bowl career? <laughs> the offensive guru got destroyed in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, last time we talked, you guys were off to, uh, to a soccer game in below zero weather. Um, any any parting thoughts from that? It looked super fun. It, so I also went to the Winter Classic outdoor hockey game. Yep. Uh, this was much warmer than that, uh, even though it was only... The temperature about, was warmer. It was 6 degrees yeah. or 7 degrees, but the stadium kind of has this a little bit of enclosed field, much smaller stadium. I enjoyed myself. I felt bad for the players, but I enjoyed myself. Oh, the players, yeah, the two Honduran players that had to get subbed out at halftime for hypothermia yeah uh yeah no it was fun i it was my first time at allianz field and it was awesome uh kyle then teased me the next day about getting oh let's get loons tickets and our kids get a little older and like let's be real kyle that's like five years away but uh we're doing a lot of fun to go to games there all the time good good all right and they won cold golf or cold sporting events. So like, is there a golf tournament they play at like when it's 30 degrees? I'm there. 
You know, uh, well, you occasionally maybe get the British Open gets uh, gets to be a little chilly, but no, there isn't anything that's like really in the elements uh, from a golf standpoint. I twist my arm, I'll go to the British Open. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. But like, you know, we played the Superintendent's Revenge a couple years ago, and I think the high was 29. Yeah, it was freaking cold. <laughs> it was really cold, but like, let's test some of these guys that way. Yeah, you know? it's hey. great. But guys, yeah, that, was, that was my favorite six-hour round ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they're complaining about the six hour rounds at Pebble. You know, yeah, come yeah. on. <laughs> Try doing it with a couple of young kids at home and uh, telling your wife that it's going to be four hours. <laughs> we're yeah. checking this on, on, yeah. on Google trying to figure out where we're at. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, um, that's probably that's all I got tonight. Um, you guys got anything else you want to touch on before we wrap it up? Nope. All good. No. Cool. Go. Well, good luck, everybody, at the Waste Management Phoenix, Show, Phoenix Open and your. Uh, golf dfs lineups of course like i said you can follow us on youtube pod any of the podcast platforms and on twitter last call to get in on our listener league please reach out uh, twitter is probably the easiest ask to join we'd love to invite you with a little money out of our pockets and have a lot of fun uh, getting to know everybody we'll be back in a week as we uh wrap up the waste management phoenix open and continue on to riviera see ya